Welcome back. Doing some maintenance stuff in ARC while I give you guys an update. So this is more of a listen to video than watch video. The reason why I decided to share this is because I think that it can help others. Just from the few references that I made about this issue, people responded like, say what? And had encountered people with this personality disorder. So I'm going to share with you my experience of finding out about people with narcissistic personality disorder. So let's jump into this. This is how it started. There is a group that I follow that I won't mention any names, but a person in the group was acting air quotes odd to me. Things weren't adding up, so I asked a friend of mine who is a licensed mental health professional to look at archived live streams. Now this is live footage, not scripted footage, and give me their thoughts. They came back with narcissistic personality disorder with possible borderline personality disorder and a disclaimer about making a diagnosis via a, a set of videos. But the videos the, of the streams that I sent the person, uh, remember this was live, along with watching the other group members' reactions to what this person was doing. The traits were so abundant, they felt confident about it. And people within PD tend to do the same thing. So, um, that's when I realized that I had the wrong idea of someone that had NPD. You know, I was thinking that, you know, it's, everybody has a little bit of narcissism in there, in them, but a person with, I thought that a person with NPD was just like overly conceited, but it's much more than that. A person with uh, NPD has an excessive need for attention but they also have a lack of empathy for others. And this is important. A person with NPD cannot care about you truly, not in the same sense that you probably think that they would. They care about what you can do for them. For example, they will show all the love and care in the world because they want attention from you. But it's not about you. It's about them. So anyway, I was like, oh, wow, really? When they told me that this person showed signs of having NPD. And I admit that it fits that person's behavior. Um, but I'm a seek a second opinion type of person. So I consulted another mental health professional showing the same archive streams uh, without mentioning anything that I had learned from the person I had just consulted. And... Would you believe they came back with the same diagnosis? And I did this one other time and the same thing happened. So I learned a lot from each mental health professional and I'm glad that I sought out the knowledge and I was sort of sorting with myself, what should I do? You know, because now that I know that this person has this or, you know, suspected to have this, um, do I even want to follow this group anymore? Um, you know, so I was thinking along those lines. Fast forward a couple of weeks and I bumped into a friend of the family that I had not seen since I was young. So they were like my parents' friends. Um, casually talking about family, she mentioned that her cousin had NPD and they were in the process of going no contact with uh, this person meaning that they don't want any kind of, no, they don't want to talk, they don't want to have anything to do, um, but there's a legal process that they're going through to do that. And it reminded her of my father. That's how I found out that my father had NPD. She thought that I knew since my mother's friend told her and she figured by now that I knew. So... I ended up going back to the drawing board with mental health professionals instead. This time, I was asking about my father. I've talked about my father publicly. Matter of fact, those following me long enough have chatted with both of my parents online. Uh, there was a lot for this person to pull from 
um, the mental health professional that I consulted and they politely told me that I seem to so show signs of narcissistic abuse, PTSD. That narcissistic abuse shows is very similar to PTSD. So, hmm, I didn't believe it. Did not believe it. Didn't want to hear about it. You know, it's like, okay, thank you for your time, but I'm fine. I am fine. Particularly where my father is concerned, I'm fine, you know? So I didn't believe it. Then something happened. I was talking with the crew, and by the crew, I mean us, Jesse, Nith, Jeffrey, and I think Colo might have been there too. Um... And Usk mentioned that Ola, his wife, had a pet peeve. I don't distribute all the points I have available in ARC on my tune or my dinos. And she wanted to know why I didn't distribute them. And so I said, you know what I always say, <laughs> I was saving them for missing Ingrams. Uh, to which Usk politely told me, again, all of them again, that there was no need to save them because between everyone, mostly everything was maxed out. You know, we had blueprints for everything. So all I had to do was borrow one, craft one. Then we have a um, an add-on plugin, whatever you want to call it, that uh, mod, there we go, uh, that will uh, allow me to make a blueprint of something that I, you know, a physical item, well, okay, a digital item, you know what I mean, something that's already made. So if I make it from their blueprint, blueprint, I can make another blueprint from the one I just made. So that's when it clicked. That's when it clicked that I was self-sabotaging myself, which is exactly what one of the signs of having narcissistic abuse uh, is you will self-sabotage yourself. Holding myself back for no reason. No really good reason. Because it's not like they didn't tell me this before. And I know you're thinking, that's not an indicator. You can't use that as an indicator. Um, but the truth is, is that I will always be grateful to Ola and Usk because there is no telling how long I would have went uh, about accepting or not accepting, ignoring the fact that my father had NPD. Them pointing out what I was doing in ARC made me realize that I do it a zillion times more. Uh, I just, I don't just do it in ARC. It's almost every game I play. There are tons of ideas in real life that I come up with or articles that I want to write, videos that I want to do, things I want to do in life, and I never do them because I talked myself out of it. My gaming videos are proof that I do it, and I'm blessed that I have undeniable proof in my videos, because those videos are facts, both online and on my hard drive. Uh, and it's obvious uh, that if I do it there, that I'm doing it in other areas too. So I was like, well, shit. <laughs> Uh, had one of those moments because that's serious and that requires serious action, right? So uh, I consulted a therapist that knew nothing about me. Uh, first session, I learned that I'm definitely suffering from trauma, PTSD, narcissistic abuse rooted. Second session, I found out that I attract people with NPD because I'm empathic. And I believe they said it in the first session, but I was still sort of mind blown on the, you know, it didn't sink in all that well. But anyway, being a caring person that likes to help others is like crack to them. It's like having sucker written on your face to see, for them to see so they know who to target. They look for people that are empathic that have lots of empathy, that are caring. Um, and, it is, and it's in the second session, this second session was a doozy, that I realized that I had another person with MPD in my life that I got rid of a couple of years ago. If you've played EVE online with me, 
you'll know that during my the mining sessions that we did, inevitably my phone would ring. And that friend, air quotes, always had an issue. And if I said I was going to mine with my friends in Eve Online on Sunday at 3 p.m., she'd inevitably call at 3.15 with an emergency, air quotes. That wasn't an emergency because she, the, the truth is, is that she didn't like it that I was giving someone else attention other than her. Back then, I was talking to her four to five hours a day about her problems, and it was interfering with the things that I wanted to do. I felt bad because she was having issues, and she'd been a rock to me a few times. I can name others that she was like that too as well. She was a rock, very helpful. Uh, but she did things for others because it always spun back to her getting attention. It was it always ended up being about what she did for you, what you owed her. Uh, to this day, I don't like talking on the phone because of all the talking for years that I did with her. And this was right after my mother died. So the second session, which I said was a longer session, I also discovered that I married one. Now, we haven't been together for years, and, uh, but he was like my father. Matter of fact, my father said that he reminded him of him when he met him. Whew. Signs are always there. Anyway, learning all of this was tough, but I was like, okay, I prefer the truth. I know the truth now. The confusion I had about those relationships, things are starting to make sense. I know what the therapist said is spot on. I need to deal with it. It was between the second and third session that my world ripped apart. I realized talking to my daughter that my mother, who I idolized, had something. We were talking, my daughter and I, and remembered what my daughter went through with her and what I went through with her. Um, my mother had actually tried to come between my daughter and I, um, which is something that people with NPD will do. We thought that it was the cancer because she had cancer um, that eventually traveled to her brain. But looking back, we realized it wasn't the cancer. What the cancer did was stopped her from being able to hold up the masks. So the shifts in personality that we saw was just the real her coming out. So the third session ended up being a dual session with my daughter. And I honestly cannot remember experiencing that much emotional pain in my life. My daughter is suffering from trauma that my mother, you know, she went through with my mother and she's healed nicely from uh, the trauma that she had from the issues with her father, uh, the man, biological father, the man that I married because he wasn't a father. He wasn't, he wasn't around. We weren't together. That it, It's a long story. Anyway, it took years for her to heal from that, working with her, you know, to let that go, to for her to realize uh, that the way he was acting had absolutely nothing to do with her. And we had no idea that he had NPD. So finding that out, she felt vindicated, uh, even though I told her that her that his behavior had nothing to do with her or me. Uh, he broke her heart and and. You know, realizing that he was broken way before before she was born, before he even entered my life, he was broken and she felt a sense of relief because there's closure there that she can close that chapter of her life. Now, me on the third session, <laughs> remember that people with MPD have no empathy. So realizing that my parents, my best friend at the time, my husband at the time, at, you know, at the time, were unable to love. That's that. That's a lot. It's 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 painful. My mother was the the one that it felt like somebody 
put their hand through my chest, ripped my heart out, diced it up, and threw it around. You know what I mean? And then I still have guilt about my mother's impact on my daughter. It's been a rough couple of months. I shut down. No videos. Stopped talking on Discord, Facebook. Made simple posts on Twitter, but I needed some time to myself to accept this. And I'm still in shock, to be very honest. But the more I thought about it, I decided to talk about it um, when I could, because I can tell people have encountered someone with MPD or a personality disorder. Um, and maybe they didn't have, you know, a personality disorder, but they allowed themselves to be taken advantage of. For example, someone who says, nice guys, gals finish last, there's no place for nice people today. I gave them my all, bent over backwards, only to be mistreated. Yeah. I'm not saying that each person encountered someone with NPD uh, who feels this way, but they do so show signs of putting other people and their feelings above their own. Not having strong boundaries in place. For example, if you say to a friend, look, if you ever mess with someone that I'm dating or have dated, I can't be friends with you because I won't be able to trust you. Uh, that means no, don't do it. And if that happens, you need to keep your word and kick them out your life. Because if you don't, you're teaching them that it's okay to mistreat you. No matter how painful it is, you need to follow through. If you ask the question, what have you done for me lately and about someone in your life, and the honest answer is not enough, then it's time to move on. Love yourself enough to say no. You're inviting pain to your life and you deserve better than that. So I don't want to make this video too long, uh, but I wanted to share, you know, why I've been so quiet and, uh, share some of my experiences uh, in my journey with overcoming abuse. There's a lot of people that are suffering from mental abuse. There's a lot of talk about physical abuse, but mental abuse is a thing. And a lot of times we invite it on ourselves. So I'll be doing more videos about this. I'm not gonna turn this into the NPD channel, but I think sharing what I went through and sharing my experiences will, can help others. And there's more videos coming. I'm working on a secret project. It's a biggie too, um, but I'm not gonna say what it is yet. On another note, Usk Ola and I had a bunch of babies this past weekend in ARC. I recorded some of that. Yeah, Usk, birthing, they, I, I know, right? He did it. Would you believe they birthed a Quetzal? I know. I know. I distinctly remember Usk never Quetzal being in the same sentence, but he did it. <laughs> it was good times. Oh, 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 oh. I got a beast dino. Beast dino that I am absolutely and I'm in love with this thing. You thought that I was in love with the Rex's roars? Oh, oh, this dino, this dino, this dino is better than that. It's better. It doesn't roar though. If it had a roar, I'd be stupidly insane. I mean, you just wouldn't, wouldn't see me. I'd just be with this dino. Anyway, I literally love it. And I'm gonna share videos of this dino with you. Okay, that's it for this one. Remember, love yourself enough to ensure you're treated the way you deserve to be treated. And I will see you guys in the next one.